Hey everyone, Ro here. You know how sometimes you've got your weekend planned, and then something happens to just completely throw it out the window? Well, that was my weekend. Saturday morning, bright and early, the postman delivered Echoes of Eternity. And well, there went my weekend. Now, I will not be talking any spoilers today. As a reminder for any newer subscribers, I've largely been staying away from talking Siege of Terror events and moments until the series is over, especially the main installments. We've discussed one or two things, but I really just want everyone to enjoy it for themselves. It's the culmination of the greatest storyline to my heart. And as I always say, the best way to enjoy these stories is for yourself first without spoilers. I say it because I mean it. To get those goosebump, emotional, adrenaline racing feelings of the unknown for yourself. Now, Echoes of Eternity is book 7 of the Siege of Terror series, and author Aaron Dembski Bowden's installment. At this point, as the synopsis tells us, the walls have fallen, the defender's unity is broken, the inner palace lies in ruins. This one is all about the War Master's forces pushing on to the fabled Eternity Gate, led by the now demon elevated Angron, and of course the Angel's legendary stand. Now, the Siege of Terror stories are so vast, so all encompassing of the global spanning, galaxy defining event, that it's quite hard to summarize them in scope. Because you get so many points of view on this one huge, overarching narrative. But as the Siege of Terror races along to its inevitable conclusion, really boiling down to the intensity of its ending, you get the sense that things have really begun to get personal now. And that may not be the best term to describe it, but with all this huge Horus Heresy series behind it, with all this vast, legendary Siege of Terror taking place, it's all kind of focusing in on this unique moment. It has a weight to it. That this is really it. The fate of the galaxy rests at the Eternity Gate. And Echoes of Eternity really manages to capture that, really bringing that sensation to life, managing to carry it along throughout, somehow ramping up that tension as it goes. The moment I opened that book on Saturday morning, all through the rest of the day and through half of Sunday, I simply could not put this book down until I'd finished it. Now, one of the reasons I really feel that Echoes of Eternity manages to immerse you in that sense of drama is that it doesn't tend to break away from it. Whereas before in the siege, so many fronts and narratives have had to be told, where you've found yourself chopping and changing between so many different arenas, here, it all feels very attached. Even one particular narrative that you'd expect to feel completely unrelated, doesn't. It feels perfectly intertwined. Now, I'm not saying there isn't a big cast of characters and stories you don't follow, because you do. Of course you do, it's the Siege of Terror. However, it all feels a little more centralized here all a little more focused, a little more reined in, hence that more personal feeling. And it really aids to building the drama. This book was always going to be Sanguinius's moment to shine, the defining chapter of his legend before the very end. And I can tell you wholeheartedly, it absolutely delivers. There were moments I literally sighed and reacted out loud reading this. I was fidgeting in my seat, not able to sit down due to the adrenaline and anticipation of some of the moments. Whether or not you are a Sanguinius fan, you will gain a whole new level of appreciation for him by the end of this instalment. There were some very surprising moments, 
this story isn't just about giving Sanguinius that shine. It's about revealing why he is the angel. Why he is the symbol of everything the Imperium, the Primarchs, should stand for. And why it's such a tragedy he is not to come out of the heresy alive. After this, I defy anyone to not shed a tear when we eventually reach his long prophesied encounter with Horus. When we finally reach the heresy's end. After this read, we're all coming out of this with Blood Angel's armies. There is just no debate about it. And I think a real beauty of this story for that matter is that it manages to tell an equally profound and powerful side storyline without managing to take away from Sanguinius's. And I won't go into that as it's impossible to do so without spoilers, but it absolutely has you walking that sensation and balance of emotion. It's a very powerful and emotional journey in its own right, opening up a lot of questions, but hey, that's just going to have to wait for a later time. From a loyal point of view, this is a story about the dawning of realization against the primal instinct of survival. This is a tale of standing against the odds knowing victory is gone, showing us the realities of just what that means. And so it has a bit of a different aura and feel to the previous Siege novels in my opinion, and it does a very good job of cutting through that expected myth. For the traitors, the culmination of that victory. The press forward for it. Throughout the siege, we've seen the fabricated layers of honour peeled away from the forces of the War Master. The relationships of the past coming to a head face to face. As cousins and brothers of the legions face off against their age-old friends and rivals. All the while the traitor legions edging ever closer to their 40k counterparts. And I think here, through Angron and his World Eaters, you feel the last of that shroud lifted. For the Primarch, you gain a real sense of what his fate means. And really, the same could be said of his Legion. We've known from the very beginning of the Heresy that it was all about the ruinous powers trying to stop the Emperor of Mankind. And so they poured everything they had into breaking humanity. And as I said with feeling the weight of the moment, you feel that this is the ruinous powers gambit reaching its zenith. The Siege of Terror series is the pinnacle of the narrative. A monumental ask and let's be honest probably pressure for the authors to bring to life. However, Echoes of Eternity grabbed me by the emotional pull strings a few chapters in and took me through all myriad of emotions to experience. It beyond lived up to the anticipation. Yes, you're here for Sanguinius, but you'll be surprised how much this story wraps you into the other stories going on. Never once did I feel disappointed to not be by the angel's side. And that is really saying something considering what moment this is. This story has surprises. It raises questions. And it defines legacies. It will have you jumping out your seat in excitement. And it could well bring a tear to your eye. While every step of the Siege of Terror has been monumental in its own right, with eternity, it just feels a little more defining. It really makes you feel that this is it. I'm not going to even attempt to rank the Siege of Terror stories in my mind until the series is over. All of them are absolutely amazing installments. But Echoes of Eternity is absolutely right up there with my very favourite reads. And I'm not just talking the Siege of Terror here. I'm talking the entire heresy. For me, it was that good. It somehow manages to grab that personal, focused narrative that I love the most, 
yet still encompasses everything the huge Siege of Terror needs to be. Just awesome. If you haven't read it, I really think you are going to enjoy this one. Without spoilers, there's simply no other way of summing it up. It's an amazing read. It really is. But as always everyone, that's it for today. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. With that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.